Hi, my name is Whitney Green. I'm an Associate Director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions for Columbia University. I'm also a very proud alum of Columbia Engineering, and now I get to speak with you a bit about what makes our institution so wonderful uh, and what Columbia Engineering can offer its students. Columbia Engineering started as the School of Mines, and it was founded in 1864 in response to the rapid growth that was happening as part of the industrialization of the post-Civil War America. It is the third oldest engineering school in all of the U.S., and it very much embodies many of the university's missions. How do we use our research, our education, and our know-how to be a part of greater society and greater humanity at large? New York City and Columbia Engineering have a wonderful tradition and relationship in which you can see Columbia Engineering's fingerprints across everything in New York, including the initial aqueduct system in New York City, the steam engine, the FM radio, and the New York City subway system, which was created by Columbia Engineering alum William Barclay Parsons. Today, Columbia's community consists of about 1,500 undergraduate students that represent all different perspectives and people across the United States as well as around the world. We are close to 50% women, which is something we're incredibly proud of, and have over 200 faculty. The ethos and mission of Columbia Engineering is summed up in the words, Engineering for Humanity. This small but powerful phrase very much encompasses and embodies what Columbia Engineering looks to instill in its students, its faculty, and its alumni. The idea is that it's not enough to be a technical expert. We want to ensure that our engineers are also leaders in the world around them and understand that they have a responsibility to utilize the great technical advancements that they understand, create, and build to make better the lives of people around them in different kinds of spaces. Engineering for Humanity really is an ethos that is important to all engineers and ensures that we remain relevant and a key part of the continued success of humanity at large. From an academic perspective, Columbia Engineering has nine departments with 16 majors between them, a lot of them being quite interdisciplinary. This enables you to pull from different subject matter to create a program that really speaks to your interest as well as specific tracks within majors that also enables you to try out different kinds of technical work. We also have 36 minors, most of which are located in Columbia College. So you can do things like major in Columbia Engineering and minor in English, or major in Biomedical Engineering and minor in Music. And you'll find many Columbia engineers have a wide variety of interests, and this flexibility enables them to take advantage of both Columbia Engineering and the many courses of Columbia College. Now speaking about the Engineering Corps, you've heard of the Columbia Corps. The Engineering Corps enables our engineers to get a wonderful technical background as well as experience much of the humanistic work that is part of the core curriculum. Columbia engineers will take half of that core curriculum, then they'll have the Engineering Corps, which is a series of calculus, usually a couple of semesters depending on your major, a series of physics and chemistry, again a couple of semesters depending on your major, a bit of economics, uh, specifically a class called the Principles of Economics, which is a cross of micro and macroeconomics to give our engineers an exposure to that kind of work, as many of our engineers do ultimately have some kind of entrepreneurial interest. Our engineers are also going to take the wonderful and famed Art of Engineering. This class is going to require students break into small sections uh, and complete a series of projects as well as one large project over the course of a semester. In tandem with that project will be a series of lectures that will be based on uh, what you might consider some of the softer sides of engineering, but questions and conversations that we think all engineers should be asking themselves. This will include things like ethics, uh, things like uh, society at large, Large, uh, things like teamwork, uh, the many, many ways in which engineers need to think about the people around them as they're going about their technical work. And then lastly, almost all Columbia engineers will complete a senior design project, and this will enable them to come up with a specific problem that they'd like to solve, build a schematic to that problem, and then build a prototype of that specific um, idea over the course of an entire year. We have a very large senior design expo in our auditorium in which all of our engineering seniors come and show off the work that they've done over the course of the year, and our faculty, of course, come and celebrate with them as well. Research. 
You can't talk about a great engineering school without speaking to its research and many ways in which undergraduates can have access to this kind of work. Columbia boasts close to $1 billion in research across its larger university, but a lot of that research is happening within the engineering school, and of course, our undergraduates have great access to that. Within our campus, we can talk about those many, many things that students can do, but we can also speak to New York City and some of the institutes that our students have access to as well. This includes things like our Data Science Institute, the Mind, Brain, and Behavior Zuckerman Institute, the Earth Institute, which is connected to the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, which is one of the uh, top engineering institutes in all over the world for earth and environmental research. And the list goes on and on in terms of the kinds of access that students have to different kinds of resources. And lastly, I will speak about the Columbia engineering community. This community is inclusive of our students, our alumni, our faculty, uh, the wonderful ways in which they can network and collaborate to address things that are happening around them. We have what's called the Columbia Startup Lab, which is down on Verrick Street, where our undergraduates, uh, our graduates, and our alumni can go and engage with each other uh, or with other members of the entrepreneurship community in New York City. We have things like the Columbia Venture Competition, where students can pitch their ideas to different judges and win prizes that often become their seed funding for some of the startups that they make later down the road. We have the Columbia Design Challenge that usually is in collaboration with some of our Columbia Global Centers around the world and is meant to address very specific problems of the current times. Then we have our maker space. As I mentioned before, this is a state-of-the-art facility that is newly renovated and created uh, with all different kinds of tools and functions that our undergraduates can make use of. This way students can build and create in all of their time, whether it's during class or whether it's outside of class. But it's important to note that engineers should always have the opportunity to express their creativity and their technical know-how in the maker space ensures that they have access to that. Lastly, we have over three dozen different clubs and organizations for engineers that enable them to tackle problems together, again, on campus and well beyond our gates. And our clubs and organizations are a wonderful way to build community, uh, a wonderful way for our engineers to think about the larger ways in which they can contribute well beyond the classroom. The Columbia Engineering Network is a tremendous group of people who are committed to the betterment and well-being of humankind at large and very much express and are a part of what makes the Columbia Engineering Experience and Engineering for Humanity.